G'day guys, welcome along. Hope you're having a great day Z. Alright, someone asked me a question and they wanted to know about uh, how you can texture, lay your textures, draw your textures accurately inside of Terrain Builder. Well, I haven't seen anyone demonstrate this, so it's a technique that I kind of worked out and I guess it's meant to be this way, but uh, I just haven't heard a lot of people speak to it. Before I begin, I must say a uh, very special thank you to Matthew. We love you long time for all of your contributions that uh, you've given to this community and your great video series as well. And for his Discord and everything else, so a shout out to uh, Matthew. And uh, let's get straight into it without any further ado. All right, so here's my map. And let me just jump in a bulldozer. And you can see I've got this area right here where I've got a guardrail, a road, and there's grass. Well, I want this to be a little car park area where cars pull into. Uh, any curiosity, this is a Victoria uh, Rosebud in um, uh, Australia, um, based upon the actual map, using another technique of taking real life maps and converting them and using some of the info from Matthew. We love you a long time. All right, so let us do it. How do we do it? People say it can't be done. It can be done very, very simply. Let me explain it to you. First of all, I'm just going to turn on the shape that I created. So we can see that uh, there is a polygon. If you're not familiar, please check out Matthew's videos on how to use the controls, create polygons. So I'll just disable it for a second. You can see here's the guardrail that runs around. See, all the way around there. Now I want this section in here all inside of here to be, for argument's sake, gravel. How do I do it? I draw a polygon in the save times I made one earlier that looks like that. Now you'll notice here if you right click you'll get options for textures. Now normally it'll be none. In this case I've added, uh, you know, dirt. Now let me show you something. When you created your file and set up your first terrain builder will have something called a, a layers config. In there is defined both your map legend plus also your textures that you're going to be using. Now I've created a few custom ones which I haven't put in here yet but they're wet sand and dry sand but I will include those later for the beach sections. So there we go we can see that these here are defined and that's why when I right click here these are what's defined. Pretty simple. First thing always save your project don't go losing it on you. So we'll just hit a save like that. Now uh, as you can see drawing a polygon is pretty straightforward and I followed the contour of that guardrail because I want it to be just inside the guardrail. So what do we do? We've created a polygon. I've given it a color. By the way in case you're not familiar you can change the colors and the widths and all that stuff over here. I've right clicked and chosen dirt because I want it to be dirt. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into File, Export, Shapes to Imagery. Now watch this. Create a surface mask, right? And we'll just call it, for this demo, New Mask. And I'll put Updated. There we go. All right. Where we'll be saving it to should be in your Sources folder where your other masks are, my preference. Crop active map, it's automatically ticked. Now, background surface, this means everything else, what is it going to be? I'm going to say grass. Leave the rest alone, click OK, be patient. Now, what this is doing is it's extracting all this information that it's seeing, and it's now going to convert that into an actual image, which can then automatically texture accurately the bounds. Now, let me explain an example. Say you've got a beach, and in my case I do have a beach. Two of them, back beach and a foreshore. There's wet sand and there's dry sand, then there's the road. I want them to really distinguish where the water comes in from wet to dry and from the dry sand to the road. Using this technique, you can clearly draw and define different sections, right? Which makes it accurate. So let's just zoom in on our example here. We can see that that's what we've done but what's happened let's go to rasters and you'll notice there's a new updated mask just here right so 
there's our old mask and for this we're going to just remove this now golden rule save 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 always keep saving this will take a moment to save once it's done that your next task is going to be to go down to your map frames properties right click now here's where we're going to export our surface mask again why are we doing this because we've created a new mask including this new surface this needs to now recreate it for it to even appear now always have export for which is working in DayZ and save our vmap ascii file i always do that now convert exported textures into pas some people argue there's a better way of doing it in my opinion it still uses the same program to do the conversion we hit generate layers because all we're converting is the surface mask now for you who are not familiar with it a surface mask is what you see when you zoom in on the actual surface that will design that will basically give you what the textures will be grass sand rock dirt whatever it be will all be defined under that surface mask so by doing this we're generating all these tiles once again and then it's going to convert them convert them over to PAA files which will be much more efficient and uh, time effective for Daisy to operate with so enough said let's generate that and I will be back when that's done now, one eternity later. Okay, so it's just converted over all of those uh, images to PAAs, and uh, it's just generating the grid 4W file, which it requires to operate. Now, just remember when you are doing all of this process, be patient, depending on your computer and your memory and uh, cores, all those kind of things. It depends on how fast it'll take. but. Take a cup of tea, stretch your legs, come back, and once that's done, you're going to be set to be able to enjoy very clean, well-masked areas which come up spot on without having to export it to Photoshop and re-import it back in and try to guess most of it. So, we'll let it generate those, and then we'll be back in one moment. Okay, so, now that we've done all that, we've saved it, we just run over a couple of things. First of all, your new mask is here. And you'll note that um, you're always saving it. That's a crucial part of it. And just a quick note, I've got an entire map with a lot of areas. It's quite a big area, right? Now, I wouldn't just keep, you know, um, going into properties and for every single texture I do, sitting there going, you know, generate, generate. I'm going to be here for days. So what I do is, I do each section, and once I'm happy with all the masks and I've done the whole map, say I wanted to do next the beach, um, then I would zoom in the same process and start doing this with the beach, and you can do it with big areas. See, like a beach is a long line, so I can create all that wet sand if I wanted to. Anyway, let's get back to it. So, as we said, we masked it out, and when we look at the mask, we can see it's fairly close to the rails and fairly online with the road. Well, let's flick over to Bulldozer. Now, remember this is in Bulldozer so the textures won't appear in the normal way they're going to appear in the game. They'll appear flat, there's no clutter. But have a look at this. You see? All of this, right up into the fence, is going to be gravel. And on this side is all grass. Look. See? and um, we can see it looks nice and clean. Now, a little hint, a little tip, if you're not happy with something and you go, I didn't like that, didn't work, change the nodes, these are called nodes, pull them out, tweak them to where you like it if you want. You know, it can be as picky as you want or unpicky, it doesn't really matter. You know, you can sit there and do all of that kind of, you know, process with it. Always and always keep saving, keep saving, keep saving just stay on top of that um, right so now that we've saved that let's flick back and let's have a look a gravel and road and look the gravel comes right up to the road nice and cleanly see how nice that is and that took nothing 
that was nice. Now, that's a small area. Remember, big areas are even easier, like a beach line. For me to do a beach line, let's go to the back beach, a place called Point Leo. Um, I don't know who Leo was, but he often likes to point to things. Um, we can see here, this is a long beach line. Oh no, we've got to do all this wet sand. Same process again. All we do is we just create a polygon and we know that's wet sand, that's wet sand, wet sand, wet sand. Look, and I can do all of that all the way along this beach. This isn't going to take me more than five minutes to mask off an actual area in my map without ever opening Photoshop. And uh, I can do it accurately. The more I zoom in, the more accurate I can be. So, and for demonstration, I'm doing this quickly. So even quickly, remember this is all gonna be wet sand and I have a texture which I built, uh, which is wet sand. If you're looking for how to do custom textures, check out um, Matthew, we love you long times videos. Uh, we do love you long time, Matthew, because you do such a good job of all of your video series and um, explaining the impossible to people that uh, obviously you ask you the same question year in, year out, but he does a great job. So as, a, as demo there, I can see that I've already started a, to do all that. Let me just do this quickly. It's not accurate, but look, look, look at this. Look, look, all the way up here. We go, no, 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 no. We're gonna go across there and bingo. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna select that. And if I'd had a texture in here, right? See, now this texture I need to create would be beaches. So new file call it beach save it there's beach click back on that and now tell it in its properties I want that to be a beach bingo now go into beaches click there again it's a beach and if we had a sand texture we could just select the sand texture keep in mind that sand texture is directly connected with this layers config for more information please check out Matthew long times videos or check out the uh, Discord chat as well um, that he has going and uh, it's a great way of helping. So once again, um, I'm pleased to tell everybody uh, the process that people say can't be done and to prove it, let's go in to DayZ and have a look, shall we? Okay guys, here we are, as promised, back inside DayZ. Now the difference between uh, viewing anything inside a bulldozer as compared to DayZ is DayZ looks at a certain file which is a clutter file and it gives you that really nice looking sort of grass textures that you can see make such a difference. Now if I just uh, appear back on the ground by pressing insert we can have a look and if we have a look here look at that grass texture rocks trees and if we run over to where we put down the dirt dirt see and you can see it comes right up to the road nice and cleanly without using Photoshop or anything. And remember, I made it look like someone needs to come along with a whipper snipper. So it's right up into the edge of here. And look at that. Textures laid inside of Terrain Builder without ever using Photoshop. So there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I threw this tutorial together, so I hope it's not too, uh, you know, quick or crude in its uh, content. But uh, please uh, check out my Discord channel. I'm going to be posting regular videos. And also a big shout out once again to uh, Matthew Longtime for all of his wonderful videos and his contribution and to the community as well. Hope you enjoyed it. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the, uh, the music and everything I had in the background. And uh, stay tuned. Uh, look forward to uh, hearing your feedback. And uh, any uh, ideas anyone has, please feel free. Join my Discord. Thank you for viewing. Bye for now.